It's a matter that sparked public outrage, questioning the very principles and priorities of Ghana's parliament. The proposed law in controversy sought to amend portions of the Road Traffic Regulations 2012 LI-2180 by giving members of parliament, ministers of state and other key officials immunity to use sirens and speed at any limit they wish. This didn't materialize. Parliament succumbed to pressure from the public and the proposed law was withdrawn. I write to move that the Road Traffic Amendment Regulation 2024 which was laid on the Friday, 14 June 2024, be withdrawn. With the speaker, this has become necessary based on extensive engagement with leadership. For many, this proposed law would only worsen the dire issues facing the country that required more attention. If I also have my money to buy my uh, V8, I can go and fix the siren. And when police stop me, I'll tell them that I'm also picking this so and so minister. Normally, sometimes, on the road, the way sometimes there's a traffic on the road and they just come straight to pass by. Sometimes it's not really okay. Most of us, we have our agencies, like things that are agents to us. Some of them use it just to escape traffic, which is unnecessary. And for the Bureau of Public Safety, such a move was a non-starter. At best, we should retain the speeding and, and the mounting of sirens to um, the presidency and leave and, and leave it with the emergency services. But in the face of raging debates over the move, MP for Asante Achim North and the Apiakubi justify the proposed law. Such people cannot meet the deadlines and therefore it is imperative for us to give uh, some access to them to be able to meet the deadlines. Contrary to his opinion, some members of parliament described the proposed amendments as unnecessary. What do I need a siren for? To go where? Where are you in a hurry to go? And I, I, I think that, look, we should be very sensitive to the interests and aspirations of our people and to be sensitive to where the country is today. I think it's un absolutely unnecessary. We are responsible for delivering to the public an effective and efficient public transport system. We have woefully failed in our responsibility to do that. And instead of us concentrating on solving that problem for the public, we are seeking to exempt ourselves. And just maybe their concerns are legitimate. A careful look into other jurisdictions show the same approach to the use of sirens as Ghana's existing law. In Ghana, just like the USA, India, Netherlands, Norway, and Poland, sirens are reserved for emergency vehicles like ambulances, fire trucks, and police vehicles. Countries like South Africa and Kenya also have similar laws. This only leaves one wondering why the Ghana government want to depart. But while a section of the public lambasted parliament for laying such a proposal, time was inching closer for it to become law. Surprised? Well, let me tell you how. Per Article 11 of Ghana's constitution, orders, regulations and rules have a special means of coming into force. And this proposed law, being in the nature of regulations, just needed to be laid before parliament, published in the Gazette, on the day it is late and will automatically come into force at the expiration of 21 sitting days after being laid. Well, if Parliament does not vote to annul the regulations so laid before the expiration of the stipulated time, they become law. Well, Friday, July 19 would have summed up to 21 sitting days since the proposed regulations were laid in Parliament, counting from June 14. In essence, the proposed regulations that had become a bone of contention were just days away from becoming law. Then there was a shocking turn of events. Speaker of Parliament Kingsford Album Babbing denied having any knowledge of the said proposed regulations being before the House. There is nothing like that before Parliament. Director said no, they have not seen anything like that. Um, I have the responsibility of admitting many of these things. Uh, sometimes they may elude me, but I haven't seen any such deal. And to make matters worse was the revelation that the proposed regulations did not get the absolute approval of the entire subsidiary legislative committee. But does the withdrawal bring closure to the matter? And are there any assurances that when the proposed regulations return to the House, they will be better. I'm just as curious as you are.